guys, welcome, welcome back. Today we are going to make some peeps. Look at these cute little peeps. I don't like peeps. I don't wanna eat peeps, but these are my kind of peeps. Uh, but first, if you are new here, my name is Kelly and I have a sewing and embroidery business as well as a fabric business. And on this channel, that's what we do. We talk about crafts. Um, I have a six needle brother embroidery machine multiple sewing machines. I do sublimation, but I don't do a whole lot of videos on it. I really should up my sublimation game because it is a good thing to have in the arsenal. So you might start seeing videos like that soon. So if any of that interests you, please hit the like button and the subscribe. I am one person away from 200 subscribers. Woot woot. So you could be that person. Uh, anyway, okay, so these are done. Uh, totally in the hoop, which is nice. So if you don't sew, you can make this happen. And the file is from, oh gosh, I hope I don't forget, um, the applique place. And I found them, they're probably on Etsy, uh, kind of a pro tip. If you find something you like on Etsy in terms of a embroidery file, make sure that you see if that person has a website because oftentimes you can go to their website and get things for cheaper. I don't know that that was the case with this. I'm just, that's just my random tip of the day. Um, anyway, so these are done completely in the hoop. We're going to use some fleece. I went to, this is just Joanne's. Um, I went and I bought the mo. I wanted minky, but they didn't have kind of the right colors and I didn't want the um dotted minky people do them like that and that's cute if that's what you want it's just not what I wanted so I went with fleece and I the point of these is not for me is not to make a ton of money I just wanted um something really small really simple uh, something for boys and girls that wasn't a shirt that I could put on my local swap and sell site that I could sell fairly cheap. And it was, I'm kind of mostly using it in my head. I'm using it as like a, um, in, uh, advertising. Like I want people to draw people in. And I thought this was a really simple way to do that. Uh, I have posted it on the Swap and Sell, and I only got two orders, but it's two people now in town that know that I embroider, and I still think it's a little far out from Easter, so I'll, I'll post it again. But anyway, I will take you start to finish on how to do these. They're very quick, uh, very simple. This it comes in three sizes, I'm going to say, and this is the medium size. I, I was tempted to do the bigger one and it would be just as easy, but I just felt like these were just like the perfect size to put in a little Easter basket. So we're sticking with this. Um, and, uh, yeah, let me take you over. Let's start on the computer and I'll show you how I get the name on there. Very simple, very quick. But just in case you're brand new, let me show you that first. Okay, just uh, real quick, we're going to open up the file. And I think I've used it recently, so I'll just do it like that. Um, and we're going to do, I can fit two in my hoop. I'm going to use my Mighty Hoop. Um, so, you know, you can do one at a time. Or you can probably in a... Um, eight by 12 hoop, you could do even more. I just, I have uh, some, uh, what do you call it? Stabilizer that I want to get rid of and it fits in my mighty hoop. So that's what we're going to use. So we can fit two at a time. Well, and I only need to do two today. So I don't really need them in a bigger hoop, but uh, again, you can do one at a time. These would fit you would need a five by seven hoop to get this size. But again, there is a smaller one and it's cute, but we're going to add names. So you go up here to the A. This is all done in, uh, in Brilliance Essentials. I do have the 
paid version. It is so worth it. I mean, I can't even tell you how worth it it is. So we're going to, we've got a Charlie and we've got a Clay, I think. Let me look up his name. Yeah, Clay. So, oops, I did that wrong. Whatever, we'll leave Clay here. Um, and I found, you know, you can play around and pick which um, font you like better. I have one called Simon, and I really like it. Let me see who it's from. If I can find it. I, I've said this before, but I know there is one of the extensions of Embrilliance you can get is... Uh, it has where you can organize your fonts better. So whatever that is, I need to get it um, because mine are out of control. Anyway, so we're gonna do clay. And then like I said, we have Charlie. And we might make Charlie just a little bit smaller. And then I use my squares to line things, to center things. So like you can see this little square right here, I line it up with a line and then I make sure that one's lined up with, oops, hello, didn't mean to do that. Um, and then I make sure that that is lined up, that square is lined up with a, that same line. So easy breezy here. And this one, let's see, we'll put him on that line. And, oh my gosh, why do I keep doing that? Um, and then that one we're going to line up with that. Okay, so the only thing, the reason why I brought you over here to show you this is because the one thing that you want to do is you want to move things around a little bit because you want the um, name to stitch before the final stitch. Now, if you've never done in the hoop before, this will make a little bit more sense once we start the whole project, but you basically want the name to come after the eyes. So all you have to do is click on that, and let's see, he is the first bunny. So we'll take his name, and we'll move it, and you just move it to where you get that line. Can you see there over on the right-hand side, the line with the little dot? And you move him there. So now that is going to uh, do the name before you do your final stitch. So we'll do the same with Charlie. And we'll move her after the eyes. Could be before the eyes too, but just in that same you know, as you're doing the front of it. So basically what your machine is gonna do, and we can go over here to the stitch simulator, but so you're gonna get your placement stitch first, then you're gonna put down your first piece of uh, minky or fleece, whatever you're using, then it's gonna do your eyes, it's gonna do your name, then you're gonna put your last piece of um, fleece on there and you'll put it upside down. It'll do the final stitch out and then you'll take it off the hoop uh, or do your next one depending. Now the only other thing I want to change is these names are going to be a different color. So the boy names I've been doing in blue and the girl names I've been doing in hot pink. I know, I know, I'm not, I'm gender stereotyping here, but that's what I've done. I assume that when someone orders the pink one and the sample has the pink lettering, they want pink and pink. So that's what we're doing. And for all I know, Charlie's a boy. Maybe Charlie's getting the pink one. I don't know. Anyway, so that's all you have to do. Simple, simple. Again, you could do multiple. You could just do one. And then we're going to save it to our machine. And I always just make something up. And then we'll go over to the machine and get started. Okay, so I actually misspoke in that last video or last clip. We are not going to the machine just yet. I wanted to show you guys how I hoop. Um, so I don't, 
I don't use my Mighty Hoop for everything, but for this particular product, um, yeah, um, project, I guess is what I meant to say. It's a good one. So if you're not familiar with Mighty Hoops, <laughs> you can see they are very strong. And I'm going to move it out of screen here so I can get them apart. Um, I was just at a funky angle. But anyway, they are really, really strong magnets, and you have to be careful that you don't hurt yourself. But I usually use them just for shirts. But again, for this particular project, I had two that would fit in there perfectly. And I wanted to use, uh, I've got this sort of medium cutaway. And you can see it's actually not quite the right size for this hoop. You would want it a little bit bigger. Um, and I don't know why. I, I actually bought this for this hoop and I just wasn't paying attention. I bought the wrong size. But anyway, I wanna kinda of use it up. Now for this particular in the hoop, you could use cutaway or tear away. Again, I wanted to use this up, but I also think maybe for this particular product, uh, project, I don't know why I keep saying product. For this particular project, the cutaway is a little bit better. I feel like it will uh, give it a little more stability as a little stuffed animal. But with my Mighty Hoop, I have this doohickey. It does not come with it. You have to buy it separately, but it's to me invaluable. It holds your stabilizer in place temporarily. So you, when you press it on, again, this would be a little bit easier if I had the proper sized uh, stabilizer. I, you know, I bought these pre-cut pieces thinking I was fancy and I was gonna, you know, save time, but I don't know. I think I kind of like them on the roll better, but whatever. And also for t-shirts, I've been using this on occasion, but I actually prefer a no-show mesh, so I'm probably gonna go back to that too. But again, I digress. So you put that on there like that, and then, like if you were doing a shirt or whatever, you would hoop the shirt first. But we only need, for an In the Hoop project, you only need your stabilizer on your hoop. Um, and then you just take this, watching your fingers, and you slap it down. So now this gets removed. And you have to remember to uh, remove this or... It could, I mean, I don't think it's going to ruin anything, but it does make it, you kind of notice when you go to hoop it, I mean, go to put it on your machine, it catches because it's too bulky. But anyway, we'll put this on the machine and I will take you over there. Okay, we're over at our machine and we got our design loaded up. There is one more thing I'm going to do and it's kind of optional, but it's what works for me. Um, is I'm going to go through and change some of the colors and then I also need to add my stops in. So on this particular machine, you go here, um, it's going to start with my left hand side bunny and I'm doing that one in a blue fleece and I found that even though, I mean, I, we could use white for everything, but I've been using the same color thread as my fleece. So I'm going to make both the placement stitch and the uh, tack down stitch, all of everything blue. So it's using my blue thread. So I just pick um, whatever. I just make sure it's consistent. So we're going to use blue, blue. Then his eyes are going to be black. That's going to stay the same. Then we're going to use blue again for the name and then blue again for that final stitch out. Then when we move over to the pink one, we're going to use pink for the placement, pink for the tack down. We will continue to use black for the eyes. We'll use pink uh, for the name and pink for that. Um, what I should have done while I was going through this is added in my stops, but I did not do that. Um, one thing that was confusing to me for a while. When you're doing stops, it means it's gonna stop. But to me, it would make sense like, 
Okay, I want it to stitch that and then stop. But if you put a stop here, it means it stops it before it stitches that out, which I want. Um, I also, let's see, do I need it to stop before the eyes? I do not. I do not need it to stop before it stitches out clay, but I do need it to stop after clay because I need to put down my second piece of fabric. So we need it to stop before that one. Oh, no, we don't. I'm sorry. That's just the placement stitch. We do need it to stop before this one though so we can put our fabric down. Then it's gonna do our eyes, it's gonna do our name, and then we need to stop before that one so that we can um, put the second piece of fabric down. So you close that and then you edit end. Now, if you've been watching me for any amount of time, you know that I'm terrible about setting the colors on my machine. All I do is I go to sewing and I look and see if it matches up and it does not. It's saying that it's going to use one for the uh, blue and blue is in my number five. So I'm going to change that. Then I know that black is in the number one position and pink is in the number two position. So what I'm doing there, in, in case again, you're very new, you just click the two you want to switch and then you have to make sure to hit this button. And then after you've hit that button, you can close it out. Now let's check it. So blue's in five, uh, black is in one, and pink is in two. So we are good to go. I have my machine slowed it down a little bit. The When it's sewing the two pieces of fleece together, it just seems to be a little, I don't know, it just, it made me nervous like it was too thick or something. Um, it's probably not, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, it's probably not, but you know, what are you going to do? So, all right, let's lock it in and go to town. So, it's going to start by doing that placement stitch. Okay, our placement stitch is down. I meant to say in my last little clip that you, I could have in Embrilliance ordered things to where it did both placement stitches first and then both, and I'm kind of doing both at the same time. I don't really find that that saves too much time. It doesn't really matter. Um, so... I've now got my placement stitch. Let me move my hoop out here so you can see better. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my first piece of fleece down. Now I think personally that fleece does have a right side and a wrong side. Um, it's a little hard to tell, but one side is just slightly like prettier, I guess, um, and a little more fuzzy. You can almost see it, if you hold it like this, you can almost see it, probably not on camera, but this side has longer, it's a little bit longer, which to me is the cuter side. So on your first one, you're gonna put the good side up, right side up. We're gonna place that on there. Uh, fleece is very, you know, it'll stay in place. It's not like, I mean, you can kind of hold it down while it's stitching, but you don't need to pin it or do anything. Uh, obviously, if you're using like a sticky stabilizer, that'll keep it in place, but you really don't need to do anything other than place it down. So we will do our, our now, now it'll be our tack down stitch. All right, so it stitched our outline and then I almost made a mistake. I let it go ahead and start doing the eyes, but you really wanna put down just a little bit of water soluble stabilizer. It just is gonna, especially for the name, maybe the eyes would be okay, um, but it's gonna make everything um, not sink into the fabric which is gonna be important for the name because our name is kind of thin. 
and it becomes hard to see. So I, it started stitching. I don't know if I'm going to be able to salvage this, but I'm going to try. So I just, you just lay it on there. Again, if you're new, you might want to pin it down. Um, I just kind of hold it or you can use, um, some scissors or I see people use chopsticks. Um, sometimes I use my pen that comes with my machine, but I backed it up. Um, so earlier when I said that you don't need to stop it in between your eyes and, uh, um, the, where it did this placement stitch, that's actually not true. You do want to put it there because you want to, um, you need time to put down your water soluble stabilizer. So I think if I do it like that, I might, that might be a big enough piece to get the name in there too. But again, let's see if we can salvage this. I'm not so sure. Oops. Oh, so my machine, if, if this ever happens, okay, I hit lock and I press that. Oh no, never mind. It was telling me to, well, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, so I think we salvaged it. Okay, what I was trying to say earlier before the machine started was sometimes my, um, it comes up saying that I need to switch to a bigger hoop, even though I'm in the biggest hoop section. Sometimes if that happens, you need to just uh, go up here and tighten your screws a little bit. It's like the machine isn't recognizing that the hoop is in there. But anyway, I know this looks like a hot mess. Um, I will show you uh, how we clean this up at the end, but you don't really need to worry about if your um, water soluble stabilizer gets bunched up. Um, that's easy enough to clean up. Uh, our, our first eye that we kind of messed up on, I think it's going to be okay, but we will make that decision at the end. So your final stitch is just to put the next, um, the back side. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier, you know, this is not like applique. So notice I didn't, you know, take this off the machine and cut around it. You just leave it big like this. And then you take your other piece and this one you're going to put right side down. So this one we put up, this one we're going to put down and you just make sure it covers everything. And then you just run your last uh, step. And this is the part where I thought it sounded a little clunky. Like maybe this was all a little bit too thick. So that's why I slowed it down, but it's probably fine. I mean, these machines can handle it. But let's do that final stitch. So both bunnies are done. I'm gonna take them off the machine and they'll look like this. So we just um, take the whole thing off. Again, if you're using a Mighty Hoop, be careful. Um, and then you'll have this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half and just show you one of them. Uh, but basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna cut around your bunny about a quarter of an inch. Now the only thing, the only part that is gonna be a little bit different, let me go ahead and get rid of some of this bulk. Um, I probably should be using better scissors. I have, I have a ton of scissors and I try like certain ones I only use to do this and certain ones I only use to do that, but it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, the only part you're not going to cut a quarter of an inch uh, around is down here at the bottom. What I do is I take my scissors and I cut at a diagonal like this. What that's going to do is help you when you go to sew everything shut. Um, so it doesn't have to be pretty. You can see mine's not. And you actually don't need it to be that big, maybe like a half an inch as opposed to a quarter. But then the rest of it, you're just gonna cut uh, about a quarter of an inch around the whole bunny. Doesn't have, now this is the only part that uh, would probably be nicer if you had used uh, tearaway. 
there'd be a little less bulk here. Um, but just get yourself some good scissors and cut around it. Doesn't have to be, I feel bad that you guys can't see. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, but get it the best you can. And again, leave a little bit more at the bottom. That'll make sense when you go to sew it together. If you cut that too short, then you're going to have a hard time getting the closure, getting it closed. Okay, this is very sloppy, but it's good enough. So, oh wait, I got to do in between, I've got in between my ears. Now I do, um, it, it doesn't seem to make a huge difference, but between the ears especially, you got to kind of get your, you got to kind of cut a little bit closer and maybe even clip it into that V some. Again, you don't want to clip into your stitching, but uh, get a nice uh, cut there. Otherwise, the ears look a little funny. Okay, so not my best cutting out, but I just want to get it done so you're not just staring at me. Um, another thing down here is you can go ahead and cut, you don't need the bulk of this. So now you've got your two sort of triangle shaped things here, and then you flip it right side out. Now I have found they're a little, I think because of the size, they are a little tricky to uh, turn right side out. That's one of the reasons why I almost switched to a bigger one because I thought it would be faster. Uh, but once you do it once, it does kind of get easier. I try to take the fatter side, which is the side with the um, stabilizer, and start pushing it through. And I do have to say, uh, the design was made so well that you don't have to worry too much about ripping your stitches. It kind of feels that way as you're doing it, like, oh no, it's all going to tear apart. But once you keep going, it's fine. I'm going to tilt you guys down a little bit. Okay, so we get him all. See how long this takes sometimes? Maybe. And it's kind of like once you get it really good, then you can just start digging it out. And sometimes I get really lucky and they go really fast. And then sometimes they go really slow. But just take your time. Whatever. I guess if you had to make a thousand of them, it would get frustrating, but I don't anticipate that. Although I would not complain. Okay, so get him all right side up. You can, to get the ears out, you can use like um, a knitting needle or you can just use scissors. If, if you were using cotton or something, that's a little more delicate, you might not want to use your scissors, but for fleece, it's usually okay. So just poke out his ears. Again, take your time. Don't, uh, don't poke a hole in him. Usually I can do it a little bit faster than this, but because we're on camera, everything takes that much longer. Okay. Then you kind of want to take your scissors or your knitting needle and round out your curves a little bit. So see how I'm just kind of taking it and making them look all pretty. Again, we still have some of that water soluble stabilizer on there and it doesn't look great but we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, okay, so he's pretty good. Poke out this one ear just a little bit more. Then all you have to do is take some polyfill. Um, where is mine? I thought it was out. Let me go grab it, hang on. You can just get this at Joann's and it doesn't take, or oh, Walmart, Walmart has it too. Uh, it doesn't take very much, but, oh, fiber, well, poly, yeah, polyester fiber fill. You could use other fancier stuff, too, but I don't see a reason why. So, I will stuff this off camera, but 
one thing I did want to point out, if you've never used fiber fill before, you want to do this before you put it into your um, item. If you don't, it gets, uh, it balls up and just isn't as pretty. So you have to do it like this and then you just into that hole at the bottom, just stuff it on in there and kind of this, what is that? Um, kind of the same deal with poking out the ears. I kind of take some scissors and get it way up in my ears first. And then the rest of it goes pretty smoothly. So let me do this off camera to not bore you and then we'll come back. There he is all stuffed. Um, and like I said, we still got a whole bunch of, not a whole bunch, but we still have some of our water soluble stabilizer. So all you do is peel off as much as you can. And then, and it works really well on these. This is a trick you can do on any time you're using water soluble stabilizer, but uh, fleece dries really quickly. It doesn't really absorb the, um, uh, water. It just kind of rolls off of there. But anyway, so what I do is I take a little squirt bottle and squirt him a little. And you can kind of rub him with your finger a little bit and that takes it all off. Again, if you, if somebody was picking this up immediately, I might take a little more time to, uh, I'm just going to cut this jump stitch here. Uh, I might take a little more time to pick out more, but I don't need these to go out today so it can dry overnight. And again, the uh, fleece doesn't really uh, absorb the water much. So your final step is to, to um, close it up. So you just flip those two. That's your now your seam allowance. That's why you left those a little bit longer so that you had plenty to work with here. Now there's several different options. Personally, I hand sew it together with a blind stitch. Um, and that's really easy if you don't know how to do it. Um, actually, if you don't know how to do it, let me know and maybe I'll do a video on that. Um, and I'm sure there's other videos on YouTube as well. You can use a, you can use a sewing machine. I would say that's probably the last option just because then you would be able to see your stitching and it just won't be as cute. Um, but if you don't know how to sew at all, which I think everyone should know how to sew, at least simple, simple things, but if you don't know how to sew you or don't want to, um, you can you can use fabric glue. And what I do is I, fa I, don't, I don't fabric glue these, but when I fabric glue other things, I can't find them, but I glue it and then I use little clippies to keep it together. But I will be hand sewing mine and then I'll finish up the pink one and these will go out today. So, or not today, but they'll be done today. Anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And also, if you have not checked out my Instagram page, um, Project Fabrics, please do because I'm doing a giveaway, a fabric giveaway, and it's five solid uh, fat quarters and then there'll be other little goodies in there too so be sure to um, sign up for that that drawing will be next week on Monday so anyway again thanks for stopping by have a great day thank you